Hello everybody, as a follow-up to yesterday's rant video, I decided to do a secondary video. This is not gonna be so ranty, but I'm gonna to explain to you what these people that are suggesting that you fix the dark print issue by adding density to your file while you're editing, why this is totally wrong. Now, I am printing a standard image. I'm using the original OEM profile for semi-gloss paper. But before I did that, I did a calibration with the Pro 1000 using the same paper. That's going to bring this printer to a perfect output condition, again, using semi-gloss paper. This is something that the Pro 1000 can do and the higher end Canon printers are able to do due to the fact that they have a built-in densitometer. Now, most of these people that are putting out this wrong information or really just the wrong approach, let's just say, because ultimately it does produce kind of a semi-good print. It's just not perfect as you would get using the proper method. They're photographers, they're image editors. They do not print, they don't print. But occasionally they get asked by people to kind of discuss what they're printing processes and of course they have no clue about color management they do know about color calibrating your monitor their monitor but they really have no clue as to what the proper luminosity is on the monitor that they just got done calibrating for color is in order so that what comes out of the printer matches what they just got done editing now as i have said a million times the first thing you need to do with your printer is to verify it. How do you verify it? You haven't touched your monitor yet. Gosh, I'm gonna say this, probably this is the 50th time. Download a standard image either from me or anyone else. Open it, file, print. Don't do anything to it, regardless of what it looks like. It might be too bright, don't worry about it, print it. Tell the driver to control color. In fact, you just tell Photoshop to let the driver control color. If you have Canon paper, so much the better because the driver is calibrated for using Canon papers. So if it's semi-gloss, as it is in this case, choose semi-gloss, paper size, quality high, and print it. In fact, I am telling the driver in this case to not control color I chose color matching to off or none and then I told Photoshop to print using the ICC profile for this paper from Canon okay so as you will see in a minute this is going to look perfect I did not edit this image at all so whether I have my monitor calibrated or not that will not come into play we are determining whether this beautiful girl right here can output a perfect rendition of that particular standard image, which is, by the way, perfect, okay? So we'll wait a few seconds. Now, what happens when you use their methods? And then I'm gonna tell you how you can avoid all of that again. Okay, it came out, we're gonna leave it here. We're not gonna look at it just yet. When you open this particular image, you don't edit it, you print it, and this is what you get. In this case, I am going a little step beyond just letting the driver control color. I am telling the driver that I want my application to control color, but I'm gonna use its ICC profile, okay? Nothing custom, okay? All I did was pre-calibrate the printer. Now. I open it, I don't look at it, I print it. Now, what about my images? So let's just say that I open one of my images, I edit it, I adjust the brightness, I adjust the color, and I print it, and now it's too dark. What does that tell you? Let's see, wait a minute. I just printed my standard image without looking at it, and it printed perfectly. Hush, stop it with the noises. Boy, I tell you, this thing is something else and it came out perfect, as I'm gonna show you in a minute. Don't peek yet. So 
when I edit my images and they come out dark, gee, guess what's happening? I'm sending to this printer that can output a perfect output from a perfect image. Guess what? Come on, I give you three guesses. The image is dark. Oh, no, it's not. Yes, it is dark. Okay, if it wasn't dark, it wouldn't come out dark. Oh, I'm going to lighten it by one stop. No, don't do that. Maybe, maybe you should have never darkened it to begin with. So what made you do that? Your monitor was too bright. Monitor brightness is measured in CD slash M2. As high as 150. That would be daylight streaming through the window and you needed that bright to be able to, you know, not see it so dim. But that is the wrong environment to edit with. My monitor is set at 80 compared to 150. 80 CD slash M2. Okay. Think of it this way. You're in a theater watching a movie. And before the movie begins, they have the theater lights on. And all those advertisements and pre-show, this and that are playing. Doesn't it look kind of dull and washed out? And then when they turn the lights down, everything looks brilliant and beautiful. That's the same thing. In an editing suite, your environment has to be darker than you would want it to read a newspaper, let's just say. That provides you the perfect environment to visualize the complete range of tones in your image. Now, I'm going to give you the reason why you should never lighten your image just to make it look correct, okay? You should edit your images so that they contain a black point and a white point. That means that when you view the tonal range on a histogram, it covers a complete histogram. Hold on a second. Maybe that wasn't the case coming out of the camera. Okay, maybe it did not reach the whole histogram. Maybe it was leaning toward the dark side. Maybe it was leaning toward the light side. But you're going to adjust that preliminarily before you do anything. You're going to set your black point and you're going to set your light point or white point. That means you find the darkest tone in that image as it is, okay, straight out of the card. And you're going to shift it over so that it's almost black. You're going to take the lightest tone in the highlight regions and you're going to shift it over to the right white until it's almost falling off that white cliff, but not quite. You're not going to clip it. Lightroom is wonderful for that. And I have a method that I use that if you watch my last live stream, I demonstrated how I go about editing an image. So now you have this perfectly toned or adjusted image so that it encompasses the whole tonal range of your histogram as you are viewing it in your editing suite. You look at it and visually it looks too light. Um, the reason it looks too light is because your monitor is too bright. If you are covering the complete histogram, then that image is perfect. Okay, at that point, it's perfect. Now, whether it is a light key or dark key image where the tones are going to be predominantly over to the lighter side or to the darker side, you still should set your white point and your black point. So if it encompasses the complete histogram, then logically and technically, the image is fine. Print it that way, regardless of what it looks like on your monitor. If it looks too bright on your monitor, then guess what you need to do? You need to reduce the luminance on your monitor. It's not simply done by pressing that little button and adjusting the brightness. You got to do it through your calibrating software and your calibrator. That is the only way to do that correctly. You have to also set the color temperature correctly. Okay. So once you achieve that, then any editing that you do makes sense because I would want, if I make a gradual or very minute change, say I print something and I'm not entirely satisfied with the way it printed. And it's not because the printer changed it. It's because of my editing. I want to really change something. And I go back to my monitor. What I had matches what I have on my monitor. So I can make a minute change that way, this way, this way, this way. And it will then reflect back. That's the idea. You want it to reflect on paper what you just did on your monitor, however minor it is, okay? 
whether it was a major adjustment or a minor adjustment. And again, remember, you don't want to fall off the white cliff. You don't want to fall off the dark cliff. So you cannot be shifting things over. We're going to talk a little bit about that when we view the test result here. Now, I want to reiterate. Standard image, okay, unedited. These standard images are perfect. They are calibrated, okay, when they're created. They usually are Pro Photo RGB. This particular one is. I have this available on my Facebook group. Join my Facebook group, download this image, and use it to determine if your printer by itself, without anything else helping it, can produce this type of result. Okay, remember, this is printed directly from the monitor using the original ICC profile. I told Photoshop to control color. I loaded the ICC profile. I told the driver to not control color by choosing color matching and setting it to none. Good Lord, this is perfect, okay? This is absolutely perfect. Black, right above black, I can see that next step. White, right below white, I can see that next step. That means that I have the complete range from black to pure white, that's the paper base covered. If I lost my last two steps, the image is too bright. The image, I edited it too bright. If I lost my last two steps or three steps, I edited the image too dark. So see what I'm saying? This is just perfect, okay? If I shift it in that direction just so that it would print correctly, then I'm literally shifting all the tonal values over to the right and several of those light color values or highlight detail will fall off that cliff. White cliff, black cliff. Okay, think of it as a plateau and all your little tones are sitting there happily. But you adjusted it so that the blackest tone, the darkest tone, whatever you want to print, black, is sitting at the precipice, just about to fall off. Whatever you want to print white, almost white, is sitting at the white cliff. So, in this case, there's nothing else I, I have to do to this, okay? So now I know absolutely without any doubt that my monitor, because I take this to my monitor and it matches my image on the Photoshop monitor. I then sent it to the printer and the printer produced this. And I look at this and I don't have to change a thing. So now I know, because this matches my monitor, because I have the luminosity set correctly, and the software and the hardware calibrator calibrates the color perfectly. So now I look at this and I say, okay, I can depend that what I see here, since it's matching my monitor, now I can go back and edit whatever I want. And it should then match here as well. So. When you tell me that you're still getting dark prints and your monitor is calibrated, well, without trying to insult you, I don't want to do that. Your monitor is not properly calibrated, period. Okay. If it was, then you would not be experiencing the dark print syndrome, which attacks everybody apparently. So listen, if I can do it, believe me, if I can do it, all you guys can do it. There's a lot of people out there that are a lot brighter than I am, and they're having this problem, and I cannot explain myself why. All right, so that is it. I'm going to go ahead and upload this tonight, I hope. And uh, I hope this is the last time we have to discuss this. I doubt it, though. I want to do happy videos from now on. I hope. All right, that is it. Thank you so much for watching, as always. And, of course, happy printing, everyone. Bye-bye.